Hello again. Third time's a charm. Uh, this time, I thought we'd jump in at the deep end and do a Kaya project track. The hibernation ones are uh, much simpler compared to the Kaya project, which is much more involved. So this track I'm going to choose from the 2018 album Up From The Dust. That lovely artwork there from Susie B. Lovely design by Mr. Nick Edel. And the track is San Pedro Rising. All right, wish me luck. Let's dive in. The original inspiration for this track was undoubtedly my time at Cosmic Convergence in Guatemala. Hell of a mission to get there. A lot of bad luck with broken down vehicles, stuck in the jungle at night, blah blah. But once arriving on site, you can't help but be inspired. I mean, it's kind of DJ bucket list stuff. They say you are going to perform on New Year's Eve from inside an eye socket of a giant skull which is nestled between three active volcanoes next to a beautiful lake. But, okay, just another day at the office then. And I knew from my time at that festival the kind of vibe I wanted to go for with this track. And I had the title, there's one of the volcanoes, is uh, Volcano San Pedro. It was looming over us as we were performing. So yeah, that's definitely the uh, inspiration. As you can see it's very involved already that's just the beginning but you can uh, immediately hear three of the star players three of my favorite musicians so first up we have Irina Mikhailova if you know Kaya Project I'm sure you know who Irina Mikhailova is she sent me over these vocals And then next up, there's an appearance by Mr. Randolph Matthews. Amazing jazz improviser and Afro blues magician. And then on the flute here, we've got Fatima Goslan. I mean, uh, those are three elements probably added on at the final stages of the track. So a lot went on behind the scenes before getting to that point. But one of the amazing things about all three people there is I met them all at sound checks. And you know, I overheard her doing a sound check for Medicine Drum in Mexico. Randolph Matthews, same, heard him doing a sound check at Turn Mills for Delicatessence Night. And uh, Fatima Goslan, I overheard at Samsara Festival on the Tilos stage in the forest, doing a sound check. And uh, luckily for me, all three of them ended up being major players in Kaya Project. I feel very blessed about that. But uh, yeah, before we get to that stage though, it's probably wise to step further back to the foundations of the track. I don't want this to be too long, this video, but they're very involved, so you may have to bear with me. Right. Well, as far as the backing track, let's say, is concerned, definitely started with a 4-4 four -four beat. There's not that many 4-4 four -four beats in Kaya Project. One, maximum two on each album. Um, but that's the feeling I was going for. Done. There you go, track done. 
not quite. So start with a little Darbuka loop in the background, which I actually had left over from one of my Angel Tears tracks. Angel Tears is a project I do in Israel with one of my favourite Moroccans, Mr. Momi Ochayon. Got a lot of favourite Moroccans. They know a good tagine, those Moroccans. So anyway, this Darbuka loop was left over from an Angel Tears track. Just a little starting point. Nice groove. And gradually start to embellish it with some live, live percussion layers. So starting with Balron playing like a frame drum. On top of that, I added a couple of Darbuka layers. Little clay Darbuka first. It's not perfectly in time, but that's great. I like the loose feel, don't want it quantized. On top of that, a metal Darbuka, aluminium Darbuka. That's like the basis of the track. Once I'm happy with that beat, next thing I did was add a bass line. Went for quite a rocky Fender P bass here. Quite rocking, punky. It's a little bit harsh and uh, toppy, so I want to filter it down. UAD Moog filtering. Get some really nice sub frequencies going with this plugin. And you probably won't be able to hear that if you're listening on a laptop or a phone, but there's a lot of good sub there. But just to bring the top in as well, a little bit. One channel here, which is literally just the top of the bass. So I'm filtering off all the low end for this one. So you just got a little bit of the clicky plectrum sound, finger sound. Stick it together with the sub. Nice rolling, but still a bit percussive bass. Nice and deep. Some of those uh, background stories, of some of the background sounds. And this is uh, one of the unwitting stars of the track. The Guatemalan Cockerel. Even gets his own credit in the liner notes. And who would have thought that that cockerel has been rocking dance floors from Tasmania to Holland, courtesy of the Suhan remix. And the only reason I recorded that was, uh, I couldn't sleep in the hotel in Guatemala. And I played like five sets, so it's quite important to get some rest before the next DJ slot. And if you're playing at night, come back to the hotel, you know, two in the morning. People are rising early over there. It's not the quietest place in the world. 
So I just recorded all these sounds to play the promoters because I don't speak Spanish. The hotel owners don't speak English. So I just wanted to explain why I might want to move rooms or something. And these are the kind of sounds I was coming up with. Kids playing, cockerels. Great stuff. I never knew I'd be using them in this track. But yeah, they became a prime component, especially that cockerel. Hilarious. All right, so there's also this kind of beautiful guitar section intro and a breakdown. I just layer up loads of guitars. People often think it's a 12 string, but I just play six string acoustic, multiple layers, you know, sometimes up to 10 layers just to get that warm spread out sound. So I'll go through some of these layers here. So probably just starts with a basic arpeggio. I started adding little embellishments. On top of that is a filtered around version. Sweeping it to make it a bit psychedelic, a bit 60s. Play that by itself so you can hear. Just a little bit of a little bit of a psychedelic edge in there. Subtly. There's like a little lead solo on top there. See, I've done a lot of editing just to make it smooth. Honestly, I don't mind playing something out of time, making it a bit, bit loose, and then tidying it up, or not, as the case may be. Like some of these arpeggios, they're really out of time, but it works for me. It's got the vibe. I've got all those uh, backing tracks together. It's time to start enlisting other people. I'm going to start gigging it at this point before vocals and flute lines are set in stone. Uh, I like to work with performers who can improvise on the fly, I'm basically finding out what fits through gigging. So I took it to Oregon Eclipse Festival and also to Azora. And uh, through those two gigs, Irina settled on an amazing vocal line, recorded it in America, sent it over to me. Great. Magic as always. Everybody, Irina Mikalova here, um, sitting by the ocean beach. Let me show you how amazing it is. So sometimes uh, on the songs I sing with Kaya Project, people wonder what they all about, and some of them are uh, came from traditional music, uh, some from more like a folklore type things, and some I just like to make up myself. Not all of them have, let's say, as a deep nostalgic meaning as the melody might suggest. So um, I just felt like sharing that with you today. Um, enjoy and nice to talk to you. Love. 
And then also for Fatima, she had to be passing through Bali with Brooklyn Gypsies. And I said to my mate Gus, uh, there's any chance you might be able to meet up with Fatima, record her over these tracks I'm going to send you. And he was the weaver. They met up in Bali and recorded some wonderful stuff. Thank you, Gus. Thank you, Fatima. And it all ended up in the album. So by the time we get to the peak of the track, looking for those little extra layers to really push it up to the next level. And this amazing overtone sound in Bansuri. Sai Malambi. Sai was uh, one of the live musicians who was enlisted for my Kaya project set at Flow Festival in Australia. Along with uh, Millie Moo, Cam Watkins, Matt Hatch. And Sai was playing live didge through that gig. That was awesome. At one point in the festival, he came stumbling out of the bush saying he'd just had a wild San Pedro journey all evening. So I said, mate, that's it. Synchronicity, I know exactly the track for you. I knew he was going to go in this track. And it just so happened it was a perfect fit. Thank you, Sai. Randolph and myself play it up. <laughs> Vocals were actually recorded at Derby Hall's 50th birthday. Luckily, a friend of mine, Jay, was doing the sound. I said, uh, do you mind recording Randolph's improv? And uh, luckily he did and uh, used those recordings, doubled up some of those with my own vocals, just to emphasize some of the consonants. Lovely. So heart songs, were something I created when I came back from America. I went to do some training out in America. And uh, with Seb's music, uh, Seb's music has a lot of landscape and is actually following a journey that he has taken um, where I responded to the sounds which I heard and felt how those landscapes would almost talk back in terms of voice. and. Um, and so yeah, I called them I called them heart songs because there was that they were almost like were just the heart of the music. I would just listen to the music and I could feel I could feel the essence of what they were trying to say and so yeah, heart songs. I was lucky enough to uh, borrow a Saz from Ben Watkins of Juno Reactor. Thank you, Ben. And uh layered up a few saz layers intentionally tried to get the tone of the loops to vary it's like a bridge sound second half is more of a neck sound and the reason i tried to get the different sounds is because uh if you've seen the other two videos you'll know something I like to do is spread it across different channels with the different timbres and timing of each panning them each into a different part of the stereo space and you get a lovely stereo spread effect <laughs> 
and the different timbre and pitch and timing all helps to make some nice phase cancellations and beautiful stereo spread. In the old days, I'd have to uh, approach musicians and ask if they wanted to be involved. More and more commonly these days, people are approaching me and sending me files, which is amazing. But in all honesty, I don't have enough time to include all of the recordings that are being sent. But one such amazing and generous offer was from Jace Singer Dumart, who said, I'm a big Kai Project fan and uh, I'd love to send you some of my clarinet. I think he's more from the jazzy, jazzy, bluesy kind of background. And he sent me some incredible stuff. I sent him some loops and this is the improv he came back with. So lucky me. Perfect, perfect fit. Thank you, buddy. And finally, I'm going to close with just with this track count. So a few people were asking if you've stayed this far, then you're a geek. So there's about a hundred tracks there, getting up to the stems point. And then once I got stems, I put it into a new arrangement and start chopping them up and adding more layers. So probably adding on another 10, 20. So all the vocals and flutes get added on afterwards. So probably looking at about 150 active tracks, I guess. All right. Well, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, if you want to support, the best way is on Bandcamp. Check out some music. And uh, yeah, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Yeah.